done what we thought was a complicated one, that um, terrace to the uh, cafe, the garden scene with the, the waiters in it and the lady amongst the sunlit leaves coming spreading down through, uh, which was rather fun. Now something very different again, more limited palette, more of the golds and the earths, um, more subtle colouring possibly coming in through the, 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 the scene, um, but a very complicated one uh, to draw possibly more complicated than the other one in some ways. So this is a very good time for me to show you uh, how a very complicated and difficult and technically um, delicate subject can be made simpler. Now first of all, of course, the problem is with the drawing. Notice on this one we've got a central um, focal point, a one-point perspective, like a big X. So it's a very good example for that. And our eye level is their eye level. So the horizon line is an eye level in the picture. The, um, the horizon line will be the level of your eyes, the viewer's eyes, whether you're kneeling, standing or whatever. So we know that anything above the eye level, the horizon level, is higher than us, but anything below that horizon level is lower than us. So these people, the eye level is here, so these people are the same height as us. And if it was a child or somebody kneeling, they'd be shorter than that. These people are sitting, so they're below the eye level. Anything above that level then becomes higher and higher. So if that person is that high, then somebody twice our height would be that height because that's the eye level. So that gives us the height of the ceiling as well. So in other words, that um, part of the ceiling there is one, two, three and so on higher than the person, than us. So the, the horizon level denotes the height of us, our eye level. And it's a one point perspective, so everything is going down to that one point in the middle here. All of these arches, the chandeliers, the windows, they're all going in to that one point here, and the same down here, things will go back to that one vanishing point. So it's a very simple perspective. We can have more than one vanishing point, but here we've just got the one. So it looks a very complicated composition. Let's see, there's a lot of stuff in it. Let's see how we can simplify it just by making marks and impression about the thing, as I've been showing you. Very loose marks with the roller to build up the impressions, the background and the light. And then I'll come back in, focusing in with my brushes afterwards. See if that helps you. Right, I'm going to start with the sponge roller, and uh, we'll do it at speed film again, just to show you literally right the way through uh, the techniques of using the roller. You know the colours I'm going to use, and you've seen in my other films how we mix them. I mix them in the palette with a large brush. I'll colour, for instance, from here. I want to take some um, a little crimson in this case, put a little bit of yellow ochre into that, a little bit of water, not too much, just enough to make it pliable if you like. And this is the trick. Roll your sponge roller through your brush to use all the paint up and it helps to even it out on the sponge roller as well. That's it, we're ready to go. It's time and we don't need to clean the, the roller really. More than four or five colours at a time normally. Work from my mid-tones down to my darks and then from my mid-tones back up to my highlights. When all of that's done, as much detail as I can with the roller. So we shouldn't be needing that many colours with this one. I'll give you a, a list here so you can see what I'm going to use.
up and use the brushes, I think, and start to pick out these lovely shapes and decorations and details. No idea how long it's going to take, but you see how we turned what was a very complicated subject. We've simplified it and just brought out the light and the atmosphere and the basic shapes so that now I can work into it and stop when I, I wish. Well, I think that's as much of the underpainting as I want to do um, with the rollers. Can a little bit dry in this case with that, but it gives that a nice ghostly background effect. It just shows you how we can just get the effect of light with the rolls. But basically, it clarifies where the, th where the objects are going in the drawing. Now I want to start pulling it together. And I'll start by working from the white at the moment. I'm just to get some of that in um, with the light here. And then uh, we'll start trying to build the faces up and the details, the salient points. And finish, I think, uh, all of the roof and the background later on. I'm going to start off with a quarter inch flat, uh, I may need to go smaller, some rounds later. I don't think I'm going to need a bigger brush very often.
itself is still quite a complicated work and it's gradually building up with the impressions of things, just making marks about in the right positions, right colours, right places, right shapes, right about one to another. So gradually just building up these colours one to another to another uh, until this jigsaw forms into a painting and I just stop when I feel it's tight enough rather than going on and on and on. But uh, not quite done yet, I think I'll do a bit more tomorrow morning yet. And here we are back in daylight again, it's always different when you get back to the blue light and see how things are going. So I think I need to spend a little bit more time on this now. Not a lot more, I hope. Sticking with my quarter inch brush for the moment, I might go smaller later for some of these details. I do before I even start these scenes, what I want is a painting. 